Anyone who's ever rented knows that sometimes it can totally suck. But no matter what complaints you have with your apartment, I bet it's nowhere near as bad as these places are. So follow me and make sure you hold your nose as we go on a tour of some of the tiniest, smelliest, and downright worst rentals in the world. <laughs> Dreadful Dorms From partying hard to studying harder, life in a student dorm can be both the best and worst of times. Or in this case, just the worst. These atrocious abodes are part of the Goche del Chev University accommodation in Skopje, North Macedonia, and they're home to 1,200 very unfortunate students. From the outside, the building doesn't look so different from any other. When you go inside, however, you're greeted with a long, dark hallway that looks like something straight out of my worst nightmares. Mold covers the walls, lighting is non-existent, and the whole place is crumbling into depressing disrepair. Students pay over $65 a month to live in this pseudo Silent Hill, and that fee doesn't even include hot water in the winter. They have to heat it themselves. It wasn't always this way though. Back in the 1970s when it was first built, every inch of the place was designed to give students the best possible quality of life. The architect, Georgi Konstantinovsky, even won an award for his work. So what the hell happened? Well, over the decades, indifferent university officials coupled with severe understaffing eventually led to the horror show we have today. Yep, the only thing distinguishing Golchi Dolchev from the actual Silent Hill is the lack of monsters. Unless you want to count the students, of course. Worst Landlord Ever Anyone who's ever rented knows how frustrating landlords can be. Give me rent! but I bet none of yours have been as god-awful as the one renting out this next abomination. A down-and-out couple who'd spent the past few nights sleeping in their truck couldn't believe their luck when they saw a super cheap apartment advertised nearby in White Rock, Canada. It didn't have any photos, but at just shy of 790 US dollars a month, about half the average price for the area, it had to be worth a look, right? Well, when they actually visited the property, they got the shock of their lives. Before even entering, it was obvious something was horribly wrong. And then they walked in and things only got worse. The whole place had been utterly destroyed by squatters, covered in graffiti and filled floor to ceiling with trash. And here's the kicker. After showing them around this total wreck, the landlord still tried to gouge a thousand bucks out of them to live in it. Unsurprisingly, they refused. More surprisingly, however, is the number of people that post such uninhabitable places online. I mean, sure, that last place was atrocious, but this shack in Santa Fe doesn't even have walls or a roof, and it's still being advertised for $1,200 a month. I suppose it does come furnished with that stylish lawn chair, though. Austere and Austell. Georgia may be the peach state, but some of its housing is anything but peachy. Costing just over $970 a month, this dingy dive in the city of Austell comes in at about $400 a month less than the local average. That average, however, is for a place four times the size and hopefully without poop all over the floor. Yeah, I really hope the previous tenant had a dog. The bathroom poses some more troubling questions though. Like why is the light that eerie red color? And if I fall asleep in the tub, Will I still have my kidneys when I wake up? Maybe somewhere else in Austell is a better idea than pretty much anywhere would be better than that place. But considering you're over twice as likely to be assaulted in Austell than the national average, I'd probably pass. Maybe there's a hostel somewhere else you can stay at instead. Hopefully your living situation isn't anywhere near as bad as what we've seen so far. But if it is, I can at least help you through it. Just hit those like and subscribe buttons and you'll get all my new amazing content as soon as it's uploaded. All done? Right then, on with the tour. Harry Potter Hideaway. Be honest, when you were a kid, you really wanted to go to Hogwarts. I still do. But although that's never gonna happen, you can still be just like Harry Potter in a different way by paying $475 a month for this cupboard under the stairs in London, England. I'm unsure, but it might even look worse than the OG cupboard under the stairs. You'll be the boy who lived, all right? Lived in a cramp hidden room inside a warehouse shared by eight other people who apparently 
love to party. So don't expect to get any sleep with them running up and down the stairs all the time. Probably as a coping mechanism, the current tenant has done everything they can to try and make their dank den look more welcoming. But all the lace, stars, and pom-poms in the world can't hide the fact that this place is less magical than a broken leg at Christmas. Believe it or not though, that's not the only time someone in London has tried to rent out a cupboard under the stairs. Back in 2015, 23-year-old Alex Lomax viewed a very similar room that cost the princely sum of $675 a month, a whole $200 more. And if you thought that was extortionate, an even tinier cupboard somewhere else in the British capital was advertised at a whopping $5,300 a month. For that price, it better come bundled with that budget version of Ringo Starr. Nano New York New York City may be the city that never sleeps, but sleeping is just about all you'll have space to do if you live in some of its smallest rentals, like here. Coming in at $1,650 a month, this apartment comes with a mini fridge, a closet, and well, that's it. It doesn't even have a bathroom. When real estate agent Cameron Knowlton tried to rent the puny place out on Facebook, he got absolutely torn apart by the internet. So much so that he changed tack and made it part of a series on TikTok about worst rentals. As well as being tiny, the prospective tenant has to share their toilet, shower, and even soap with every other apartment in the building. I'm sure that was super popular during the height of the COVID pandemic. And if you look really carefully, you can see that these photos were taken at Halloween. The scariest part of this whole thing isn't the skeleton on the porch though. It's that someone thought this sad little room was worth $1,650. South Korea's smallest spaces. When you think of South Korea, you might imagine Korean barbecue, K-pop, and more recently, Squid Game. But I'm here to introduce you to another uniquely Korean thing, Goshiwan. Goshi what, I hear you say? These depressing windowless cubes in Seoul are part of a building originally designed as temporary student accommodation. Because of their affordability though, the tiny box-like rooms, called Goshiwan, attract lots of other more permanent residents. One such den dweller, YouTuber Anyan Koop, uploaded a review of his $175 a month Goshiwan. He explains that although 30 men live in the complex, there are only two measly bathrooms so you really wouldn't want to be the last guy in that queue. Though with a bedroom the same size as the average American laundry room, a trip to the restroom might be a welcome reprieve from the claustrophobia. Just look, without moving his feet at all, he can touch both walls with one hand. Yep, this place is so bleak you could even call it soulless. Kilburn Killjoy Okay, Picture a fully furnished studio apartment with an open plan kitchen, high ceiling, and bright decor throughout. Got that image in your mind? Cool. I bet it's nothing like this apartment in Kilburn, London. Unbelievably though, it was given that exact description by the landlord advertising it. It's got a grand total of two rooms, although the bathroom can only be accessed after clamoring over that grubby fold-out bed. What a bathroom it is though. You could almost sit on the toilet without having the sink uncomfortably pressing against your hip. Almost, that is. And for just a shade off $700 a month, the small grammy space could be all yours. Don't worry though, if that place hasn't tickled your fancy, there's more. Only a few miles east you'll find another apartment that just might. For a whopping $1,200 a month, you'd expect this place to be significantly better than the last. And I guess it is if you happen to think that shower placement is convenient rather than utterly ridiculous. The actual bathroom isn't any better with dirty walls, a dangerous step up onto the toilet, and is that the washing machine? Okay, whoever came up with the layout for this place should have dropped out instead. Toilet Troubles If I were to ask you where the absolute worst place you could put a toilet was, where would you say? I think right next to your bed would be pretty high up on the list, like in this grim apartment somewhere in China. You'd better hope that flush works or you'll be trying to sleep mere feet from your stinky poopy payload. Or in the case of this even smaller apartment, just inches from it. Jeez, you could literally roll off the bed and get a face full of feces if you were really unlucky. Though whoever designed this, er, uh, bathroom has a lot to answer for as well. 
Seriously, in the middle of the staircase. You'd be getting a lot of stairs, all right. Alternatively, if you want a slightly more covert approach, this perching toilet might be just the ticket. Nobody will be able to see you if they're coming down the stairs. But if they slip and fall down that gaping hole, they're not going to be able to see anything. I think most disgusting toilet placement, though, has to go to these two guys' apartment. They've decided to embrace their toilet kitchen combo and aren't letting a single poop get in the way of some classy cooking. More power to them, but there's no way I'd be popping around their place for food anytime soon. San Fran Sham San Francisco is a fun place to visit, not least for its vibrant culture and famous landmarks. But if you were a resident of 1751 Market Street back in 2014, there was nothing fun about the place. That's because you'd have been living in some of the most abhorred conditions imaginable. The mold-covered ceilings were falling apart, bed bug nests covered one of the door hinges, and worst of all, bloodstains splattered the walls and staircases. What's more, the people living in this waking nightmare paid up to $2,000 a month for it. And if they didn't pay the extortionate amount on time, well, they'd be brutally harassed by their landlords who'd let themselves in through the front door at 7.30 in the morning and enter their rooms demanding money. These same landlords also refused to fix any of the insane issues with the property. Unsurprisingly then, 40 of the fed up tenants teamed up and sued them for $10 million, which in my opinion, still isn't enough. Take the money and run has never been a more appropriate phrase. Claustrophobic Closet Ah, London, the home of fish and chips, the queen, and you. If you want to pay $220 a month to live in a cupboard, that is. Oh, sorry, <clears throat> a cute little loft conversion, as the advert puts it. The floor space can barely fit a twin-sized mattress, and you can forget about headroom. This glorified storage shelf is hardly two feet tall, and you'll need to climb a ladder to even get to the door. If you can call it a door, and once inside, well, at least it has its own freshly washed bedding, though I'm pretty sure there's nothing fresh about this dump. Craziest of all, it looks like someone actually did live here before the advert was posted, and apparently they survived on a nourishing diet of ketchup and oats. Yum. So if you're less than five foot four inches tall and with no history of claustrophobia, you could be this closet's perfect tenant. Oh wait, the ad was posted on the British online marketplace Gumtree over seven years ago. Sorry, try not to cry too much, okay? One dollar doozy. So we've seen a lot of terrible overpriced hell holes. Now, how about something half livable? Japan's capital, Tokyo, is known for its teeny tiny apartments, but rarely do they come as stylish as this. Swedish furniture company, Ikea, bought a minuscule 100 square foot space in the fashionable Shinjuku neighborhood and filled it with everything you could possibly need even a personal laundry machine. As part of a promotion on products for small homes, IKEA loyalty card members could apply to live in the room at just 99 yen a month. That's an insanely cheap one US dollar, or the same price as one of their blue tote bags. Now there's no denying the incredible value for money, but even so, I really couldn't imagine myself living here. It's still very cramped, and everything in it is made by IKEA so it'd be like selling your soul to a cheap furniture supplier. It's even being rented out by the store's fishy mascot, Blue High. Hmm, I've heard of loan sharks, but never rent sharks. Toronto. Canada's largest city, Toronto, has some incredible places you can rent, but with rent prices on the rise, you're more likely to find yourself looking at somewhere a little less grand. Even so, you'd hope not to be stuck with anything quite as bad as this. Oh boy. Despite publishing an advert claiming that the house came fully furnished, the landlord couldn't even be bothered to provide a bed frame. So going to sleep in this dive would mean being real close to the rats that probably scamper all about inside of it. And looking at the other rooms, you wouldn't be any better off in those either. I mean, there's literally nothing in this room other than a small window which I guess would be useful for looking out of and pretending you're anywhere else. And in this one, uh, there's the bed frame at least. So any guesses how much this bad boy was priced at when it went on the market back in 2015? $10, $10.99? Nope, 
it went for a ginormous $3,100 a month. Man, at that price, I really hope they tossed in those corn pops. Treehouse of Horror Everybody loves a house with a unique defining feature. You know, a marble fireplace, wooden beams, a tree ripping through the walls. Wait, what? Yep, this London property was on the rental market for over $500 a month back in 2014, despite having a whopping great tree growing through it. The tree had first smashed through one of the windows before continuing unchecked through the so-called living room and into the walls. The house had been illegally converted into flats by the landlord and was shared by eight residents with just one toilet between them. Worst of all, electricity was supplied throughout the property by cables that had been drilled inside this tree. Believe it or not, this isn't very safe. An electrician coming to assess the place even went as far as to say it was the most dangerous site he'd seen in 35 years. I do wonder how anyone ever agreed to live there in the first place, though. I mean, it's not like you could hide that massive tree. At least cover it in wrapping paper or something. Petite in Paris. If you've watched the Netflix show Emily in Paris, you might remember the Chambre de Bon, French for maid's room. The spacious apartment depicted in the show is nothing like the real ones though. More cramped and cozy, these miniature abodes can be found on the top floor of mega expensive Paris townhouses and back in the 19th century were occupied by live-in maids. Nowadays, however, landlords rent them out to people looking for cheap accommodations. This one, for example, went up a few years ago for about $225 a month. And yes, that is a bathroom kitchen combo because we all get cravings to make pancakes while we're sat on the pooper, right? Hmm, hygiene obviously was on top of the designer's list here. Even so, some Chambre de Bon were a whole 10 square feet smaller than this. But in 2002, these were banned from being rented. So yeah, if Emily in Paris was at all realistic, she wouldn't have bothered going to Paris at all. Boxy Bedroom when you think about an English countryside mansion, you probably picture the interior to be full of grand chandeliers, rich carpets, and silky curtains. I bet you don't picture this. Called Foley Hall, it's basically the Dollar Tree version of Downton Abbey, complete with overgrown, neglected gardens. The once fancy manor house was converted into a home for international students in the 1940s and has since been split into loads of tiny apartments. And I mean tiny like this one, where someone has taken an already pitiful kitchen and shoved a bed straight into it. The barely believable bedroom is on the market for a whopping $800 a month. Way too much for a glorified pantry. But I guess its proximity to the University of Reading might make it a hot property for some undergrad who really doesn't want a roommate. Squashed in St. Petersburg. Russia has a reputation for being a pretty crazy place and trying to find somewhere decent to live there can drive you just as crazy. In the bustling city of St. Petersburg, the suspiciously low sum of $120 a month can net you a whole studio apartment, if your definition of studio apartment is a windowless cubbyhole in an old warehouse. The bed is crammed in between water pipes and a dodgy looking heater, so at least you won't get cold, especially not if that thing goes up in flames. As for the toilet, well, just look up. Jeez, using that death trap would be hard enough at the best of times, but imagine after a huge curry. One wrong bowel movement and your poop wouldn't be the only thing crashing down onto the tiles below. Adding to this flagrant disregard for safety, there's a microwave and clothes iron directly beneath the shower. So if you don't fall to your premature doom, don't worry, you could still electrocute yourself. Cramped Cube when I was a kid, I loved my cabin bed, mainly because of the cool little den I made on the bottom. This $1,000 a month studio in London has taken that concept to a whole new level though. You've still got the raised bed, sure, but underneath it, there's a whole lot more than a children's den. In fact, almost all the utilities in the room are under there. That squashed kitchen has just enough space to open the oven door and there's a fridge and washing machine crammed in too. Plus, in case you were wondering where the toilet is, just look to the right. The whole cubicle is also under the bed. It's like someone got a regular sized apartment and tossed it into one of those car cubing machines. I've gotta admit though, it's kind of impressive. 
and whoever designed it must have thought so too. Look at that couch placement. Who needs TV when you can sit and marvel at the wonders of your kitchen toilet bed? Only a couple of miles northeast, however, an even smaller flat went on sale. This joke of an abode was advertised for about the same price and makes the cube look like luxury. Where's the fridge at? Under that grotty mattress? If not being able to store food for longer than a day is a deal breaker for you, you could opt to stay elsewhere in London, like this delightful little loft conversion. There's a fridge, sure, but it appears to come at the price of, well, everything else. I mean, come on, what is that? A bed for ants? Compact Capsules If you're ever in Tokyo's Shinbashi District in Japan, you might come across this supremely strange building. It may look like a 13-story pile of washing machines, but it's actually a mega-weird housing block called the Nakajin Capsule Tower. The tower is made from 140 tiny apartments, or capsules, and each one is designed to be removed and replaced, so the whole thing can grow and change like a plant. At least, that's the idea. In reality, none of these capsules have ever been replaced since the tower was completed back in 1972. And now? Well, it's scheduled for demolition because it's riddled with asbestos. That plan went well then, hmm. Even so, 20 of the least asbestos-y capsules are still rented out at around $600 a month. For those people daring enough to take them, that is. Each pod is around 100 square feet and originally came tricked out with a wall of retro appliances that would look right at home in a spaceship. Many of the capsules have since been modded though with lighting rigs and all sorts of other crazy setups. Just in case you were thinking this sounds pretty cool though, hear me out. Even if you manage to avoid the asbestos, the building has no hot water and you'd be living in constant anxiety due to the looming threat of demolition. The one place that does have hot water is the garbage disposal room. And uh, showering there sounds pretty trashy to me. Well, that's just about the end of our terrible tour. What's the worst place you've ever lived in? And was it as bad as any of these? Let me know down in the comments below and thanks for watching.